This is the Halftime Show with Omar Adori on Pulse 95. Nice strike! Oh, better than nice! Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Salam and welcome to the Halftime Show with Omar Adori. I am your host covering everything sport, international, local. Hope you're blessed and tuned in on Pulse 95 Radio, the Halftime Show. I have a great guest in store for you today. Shout out to everyone who is tuned in on 95 FM, Pulse95Radio.com, our app Sharjah Broadcasting Authority, or even if we're streaming live from YouTube, uh, Pulse 95 Radio, we are there. I've got Arij Alhamadi on the show today and I'll tell you one thing. I love development in sport and especially when it comes down to women development in sport and this lady is uh, is an example of that fantastic athlete fantastic attitude and I wonder if we're looking at a possible future coach as well so I hope you guys are going to enjoy the show today in the beginning I'm going to talk about the Premier League as that's closed up obviously yesterday the final curtain United fans must be loving it today and I'm going to be asking Arij about her development in sport how she sees the future of the UAE women's national team and as well her idea because I love the way she thinks when it comes to sports on uh, on the halftime show so make sure you buckle up go get yourself a tea come and chill and we're about to be on right after this enjoy Rudy mental here we go oh he loves the fire and what a goal this is the halftime show with Omar Adori on Pulse 95 it sure is that time it's the halftime show with Omar Adori I'm your host coming everything sport international local hope you're having a blessed day wherever you're tuned in I got all my friends from London KFA tuned into the Instagram live at Omar Alduri or if you are locked on on the waves on YouTube Pulse 95 Radio thank you so much for tuning in if you're wondering my guest is on her way don't worry everything's going to be good Adij al the UAE national team football player is coming on the show and I'm so excited to have her on but before that right okay the Premier League is done now so with the Premier League being done now how was your final day Overwhelming, underwhelming, depends who you support really. I personally am looking at it, but there's a slight irony for me, not because uh, my team finished quite poorly, and I will say that the season, well, when you have three coaches, you are probably going to finish poorly, but that's not the point. The point is is that a certain Arsene Wenger, professor, uh, the person who's now working at FIFA, used to be often ridiculed and criticised for finishing in the top four and marking that as an achievement. Now, for 22 years, he managed to finish in the Champions League spots, even though he had to sell his favourite player. Now, I'm looking at all this and I'm, I'm actually thinking, why is everyone celebrating for finishing in the top four? Kind of makes me think of Arsene Wenger and think he got a lot of harsh criticism. Shout out to Hatim as well, my cousin, uh, who is tuned in on Instagram live. See, it's even nicer when you see family. That's that. That's all I have to say. You know, my day gets brightened up when I see people tune in, log in, you know, lock in on the YouTube as well of this 95 FM or even Instagram Live. I'm talking about sport. I'm talking with uh, the UAE female national team player, Arij Al Hamadi. She'll be jumping in. But football fans, the Premier League ended yesterday. It's over for a month. Uh, just over a month, I'd say. About six weeks. How do you feel it went? Text us 4215 at the Salat or do or slide into the DMs at Omar Duri on Pulse 95 Radio. And let me know, how did your team finish up? And was it the spectacle that you imagined? Or was it a little bit underwhelming? I don't know. I mean, uh, we were expecting fireworks on the last day. Leicester was, were really poor, to be very, very honest. I mean, and not at one point did I think Leicester City were going to beat Manchester United yesterday. And not just because of a depleted side, but it also made me question Brendan Rodgers, who... When he came on board at Leicester, everyone was waxing lyrical about him and saying how amazing and incredible he is. This is, and this is going to sound a little bit harsh from where I'm sitting, but this is probably why the top four teams haven't hired Brendan Rodgers because it's always he's always come short when it comes down to high expectation, high level. He was very close with Liverpool to win the Premier League. Obviously, unfortunate circumstances, and people are going to look at Steven Gerrard and say, "Yeah, but it was Gerrard's fault. He slipped." I'll take it even one more than that. I'll say if Brendan Rodgers had played for a draw and been a bit more pragmatic in his approach that day, or even for those last few games, then maybe Liverpool would have won the league that time. And again, now with Leicester City, you have the opportunity to beat Manchester United, knowing that Manchester United attacking-wise are a threat, but defensively are a little bit shaky. Even when, when there were balls that were mishit into the ground, De Gea looked very, very uncertain and low on confidence. And there has been mixed reactions regarding De Gea and whether he's getting fair criticism or not. 
But when I see that and I have a striker who's playing for me as a coach, I'd say test him, shoot from far, keep it low next to his feet, let him react, make him make a mistake. And that's why I think Brendan Rodgers yesterday, I was pretty disappointed when I saw him, you know, um, not go for it a bit more. But Manchester United do deserve it. They do finish third. Um, yesterday, just after the uh, the results, obviously the Manchester United fans had uh, <laughs> sent messages all around and, uh, and, you know, throwing it in the Arsenal fans' faces. I mean, Arsenal were awful this season. Let's not make any just of it. But they only finished 10 points behind Manchester United, albeit in a very poor position. They're still 33 points off the champions, which we have to say, congratulations, Liverpool. Uh, this season has been a remarkable season. Despite winning it very, very early, you still have won the league. And let's not forget the manner that you won, especially before you secured the points. So that, that tells me a lot about Liverpool. Then it looks. Then we look at the rest of the, the teams. Bournemouth got relegated Watford got relegated and Norwich were already done before that so no surprises really that I felt kind of sorry for Wolves to be honest because I thought they had a remarkable season and bear in mind a lot of people forget that Wolves have only been in the Premier League one season longer than this season so two seasons in total and they're challenging for European places already so that in itself is full credit to them uh, which the manager has done an incredible job at. again cannot sidestep that one bit so what do you guys think did you think that you know um, that it was what you expected at the end you know uh, I am happy that there's going to be a strong showing in the Champions League for British clubs because there's no point trying to wish that you know some of the less prestigious clubs enter the Champions League because next year the investment will be even higher and one thing I did like about what Oli Gunnar Solskjaer said is he said next year the opponents will be better so that that tells me at least he's not getting carried away and saying you know that they're going to win it next year or anything like that because let's that's, that's not face it. Liverpool and City are miles ahead of everyone else Chelsea are looking very very good as well so there are a lot of teams right now that are saying you know, thank God we finished in top four. But guess what, folks? It's going to be a lot harder and it's going to be a lot more challenging. And now, whenever you do finish in the top four, teams study you even more. So there's something for you guys. 4, 2, 1, 5, it's a lot or do. Let me know your thoughts on the final day of the Premier League. Here, tuned in on the only place to be at three, the halftime show on Pulse 95. Here we go. Oh, he loves the fire and what a goal! This is the halftime show with Omar Adori on Pulse 95. It sure is that time. It's the Halftime Show with Omar Duri. I'm your host, coming everything sport, international, local. Hope you're having a blessed day wherever you're tuned in around the world, whether it's 95FM, Pulse95Radio.com, our app, Charger Broadcasting Authority, or even if you're on the YouTube live right now on Pulse95 Radio. We spoke about her. She's here now. I'm happy she's here now. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna welcome her to the Halftime Show. Um, Arij Alhamadi, am I saying the name right? Hamadi. Uh, Hamadi, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you. Nice little round of applause there for Erich. By the way, guys, we are respecting social distancing. There's no one in the studio apart from <laughs> me and her. Um, Erich, you're here now. I'm happy you're here. We go way back. Yeah. Uh, Omar, thank you for stays for having me on, sh- on the show. I'm I'm a listener, so and I've seen the type of people you bring, the talents uh, on the show. So really, it's an honor for me to be here. I'm sorry I'm late, but I'm here. <laughs> I made it. You made it. You sure did. And listen, the most important thing is the star is here now. And that's, <laughs> and that's all I care about because people are used to hearing me on the show all the time. Uh, the fact that you've come on the show, we go way back. I've seen your development. Um, it's something that I've been very fortunate enough to witness as a coach, uh, as a fan, and as a person in the stadium as well from when I, I was coaching against you to when I was coaching with you. And uh, I'm really happy you've come here because you're actually the first... UAE national team footballer on the show. It's an honor. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> it's an honor. <laughs> okay. Erij, how did it all start? Uh, which which part? <laughs> football or national team? Yeah, or? let's say let's talk football first. How did it all start for you? Uh, it must have been um, the hype of World Cup, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, might have been 94, 98, but I think that's when I was introduced to the sport. Yes. In 98, you know, the hype built up. And then and then just, you know, I, I was already interested in sports. So, um, But football, for some reason, just stuck with me, you know. 
Um, and yeah, from there, I just uh, played with my brothers, like most girls will say. They, you know, you start off with your brothers, you're in the neighborhood with your cousins and whatnot. So, um, and, and yeah, I just practiced with my brothers in, in the neighborhood and tried to get into a team, but that was impossible and, at the time, to be and, honest. And speaking about brothers, what role did family play in this? I'm very intrigued about that. Uh, in like my development? Yes. Not so much. Encouragement, they, development, I mean, you, you name it. Not so much, to be honest. Mm-hmm. They weren't as interested in football as I was. Okay. Um, well, maybe this is something a lot of people don't know, that uh, my half-brothers are already in. Uh, they used to play in the Sharjah club. Okay. Uh, but it was it was not okay for me to be playing in a team or anything like that. Right. So I was just playing as a hobby, you know, as sports. So I, I played basketball, I played uh, softball, uh, athletics, and, and football. But football wasn't so serious maybe to them, so it didn't matter whether I was practicing or not. Um, yeah, so um, they, they didn't really encourage me in any mm-hmm. way, but uh, they, they played with me, so right. that was good enough for me. I managed to practice. Yeah. Uh, and it was just uh, my own, like trying to get find a team, trying to find a, a group of people to play with. Right. Uh, and it only started, I think, uh, in university when I was able to play 7 aside in Dubai uh, uh, Women's uh, DWFA. Yes. We were part of that. Yes. And that's when I really got a feel of uh, tournaments and uh, com- competitions. Yes. Not. And, and being and being in those competitions, do you, in hindsight now that you're you're more mature, you're more experienced, you've played at the high level, do you wish you would have started early, or has your development kind of played its course to you to learn on the way, kind of thing? Um, I think it was uh, honestly, it, it's different mm-hmm. for sure. Like with the going from seven aside and that just community kind of competition and whatnot. Yeah to uh, joining the national team, playing 11 aside. It's a complete 180 degree change, right. but I think it was all gradual, to be honest, like practicing with my brothers into playing with a team and, you know, playing in a more organized fashion and then playing on a bigger scale, 11 aside, more playing for the national team. It's a lot more pressure, you know, right. on, on, on your shoulders, uh, but it's an amazing feeling. Uh, right. I can't describe it. Um, it all played its part, you know, it's all, uh, and of course, like it was, you know the will, the determination I had to actually want, wanting to be better a uh, football player, wanting to join the national team, uh, just helped me along the way to just practice on my own and eventually find the team and eventually, you know, push myself harder to become uh, in the starting lineup. Yeah, so. yeah, fantastic. I mean, again, I say this not just because she's on the show. I would have said this even even behind the back, but I've seen the development and I've seen the growth in Eddie just playing a lot of, a lot of that comes down to hard work and coming up next we're talking about taking it to the next level with Rijal Hamadi did I say it right? yeah yeah, yeah? <laughs> Rijal Hamadi on the only place to be at three the halftime show on Pulse 95 oh he loves the fire and what a goal this is the halftime show with Umar ad on Pulse 95. It sure is that time. It's the Halftime Show with Omar Duri. I am your host covering everything sport, international, local. Hope you're blessed wherever you're tuned in. I've got a few people I have to shout out. We've got Murad, we've got Spicy, we've got Maria, we've got Fadi, we've got Terry from RBO. Of course, love to see her there. Ala, uh, wow. How many people we got here? We got Marvish, Mo Yunus. Sorry, guys, if I'm forgetting your name. No pressure, Edij and Rania, of course. Mummy Mayhem. Um, great for you to tune in. I do have a special guest today. It's been a, it's the first guest I've had in about five months. No pressure, Edij. Um, it's great to have Edij Al Hamadi on the show. UAE national team footballer. Someone I've kind of seen develop the whole way. Edij, something I got to ask you. Um, when it comes down to challenges, now a lot of times we hear athletes talk about their biggest challenges. What comes to mind when I ask you that? Um, I have challenges on and off the field. Uh, you mean, I mean, I have things like I, ha- I want to excel at work and then I also want to excel at football, you know, and you have to split your day for both, you know. Uh, and part of that, uh, your sleep and your focus and your nutrition, everything plays part into that. So it, that for me was was a little bit difficult, uh, especially especially when I when I started with the national team. Yeah. Because that was 180. You know, it, it turned from once a week practice and once a week game to every single day uh, and two hours practice and uh, the commute. Uh, and the pressure to perform as well, um, both on the field and off the field for work, you know. So uh, that was challenging. But once you get into the rhythm of it, you know, it, it becomes easy. It's, 
it becomes on autopilot. It's not easy, but you just manage. Yeah, and there's a lot of young athletes who are aspiring to get involved in sport, especially the females in this part of the world, in the Middle East. Now that you've experienced that, uh, what kind of advice would you give them? Uh, look, uh, when I started, there wasn't this. So yeah. I was playing alone. I was, I was playing with my brothers. I was playing at school. But uh, we have the chance now. There's there's academies, there's uh, schools, there's clubs, there's tournaments. So take advantage of that. Work hard. You know, if you want to get there, just keep working hard to get there. You know, keep looking for opportunities. Keep looking for what you want to achieve, for your goals. Set your goals and try to achieve them. And, and you will. If you yeah. just work, keep working hard towards that goal. And and something else I've got to say, and, and a lot of the, the the viewers and the listeners on YouTube, on Pulse ninety five Radio, and even on uh, Instagram Live are watching now. There's quite a bit of wiseness in the way you speak now. Okay, <laughs> um, when I hear that, I hear someone who can not just inspire but also lead the way for a lot of the youth players. Is that a role you would possibly consider? The playing career is not over yet. Let's just <laughs> let's just let's just say that now. But we've often had plenty of chats about football, about sport, about development. Is that something you would consider? For sure. I mean, I love the sport, not just playing. But uh, I haven't had enough of playing for sure. So I'm still playing. But definitely, it's something I, I want to look into and just find my space in there. I love because. I want to give back and I want it to grow in the region as well mm -hmm. and in the country, so for sure. Question coming in from Hassan. He asks, question to Adij, how did this pandemic affect you as a player? Very good question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I missed football. I mean, uh, you, you've seen me on, on Instagram. I've, yep. I've, I've done a few like football quiz, anything just to connect with my uh, football friends, anyone interested in football. Uh, I, I, I try to do some, you know, fitness challenges with my... F I mean, maybe it's not related to football, but, you know, as a player as well, you need to maintain your fitness level as well. Just, I mean, I enjoy it, but mm -hmm. it's also part of my job to stay fit so I can play when we go back yeah. to training. Um, her, by the way, her yeah. and uh, and Fadi, her husband, are super fit, by the way, and they, they, <laughs> they actually... Uh, spoke to my wife and and I about doing a fitness challenge. We didn't realize how fit they are. They are super fit. So if you haven't seen her fitness challenges, head over to her Instagram page. We'll give you that at the end. Um, you guys destroyed us, though. <laughs> Not as fit as you guys, but it's it, okay. It was close. It was very close. Uh, another question from Ala, who's tuned in from Saudi. We all know women's football has become big recently. What advice would you give young girls that want to become f professional football players? Um, That's a good yeah, one, Ala. Like, I mean... It's really big in the U.S., yeah. uh, not there yet here, but it's definitely growing. Like I said, when yeah. I started, there wasn't even academies. Right. You can't. You just play with boys or you don't. You just play in your backyard, you know. Yeah. So now you have all the opportunities in the world. So there's, you know, national teams developed in most countries. Uh, just, yeah, practice, join academies, uh, try to get yourself in that opportunity that will uh, expose you to the national I mean that's what I did Yeah. because I didn't know how to uh, join the national team but I saw an opportunity where they organized a uh, maybe I'm going a bit off topic no no here, no, but, no spot on uh, I like it uh, they, they organized a competition and I joined the competition with my seven aside team actually Maria was on my team that time as well. okay shout out to uh, Maria no, no. Uh, she might have been on the other team I'm not sure but it was around the same time um and yeah, I just I managed to speak to one of the girls there and I tried to aud audition and I got myself an audition and then I joined and I started practicing with them. Speaking about that, you have another question from uh, the one and only Maria who says, do you feel that cultural challenges impact the female players? Uh, That's a very good question. Cultural challenges as in, uh, well, I mean, for sure, it's, it's kind of still not accepted here so some girls uh, it affects their parents as well so you, you have we face this all the time as well with the younger kids yeah younger players they start they develop they become really good they 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 find their place in the team and then they get to a certain age where the parents just feel like okay it's you know you're too old for this mm -hmm. uh, and they pull them out of the team has that changed the way uh, you would your your version of parenthood Oh, for sure. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've always had this outlook on it. I didn't understand what, how, why parents would stop their kids from playing a sport. You know, uh -huh. it's it's a good, it's a healthy lifestyle. You know, and just like any other sport, 
football, yeah. basketball, swimming, it's all the same. Yeah. I mean, it's not fair to just not uh, give him that uh, chance. Fantastic. All right, coming up next, I'm going to put Arish to the fire round. She looks pretty chilled and cool right now. So we're going to get to know her a proper way. Shout out to everyone who's tuned in. Ali and even Team Noguera Dubai as well. I'm trying to get Munir Laziz on the show. So if you are tuned in, guys, let's get him on the show as well. Coming up next, fire round with uh, Arish Al Hamadi on the only place to be at three, the halftime show on Pulse 95. Oh, he loves the fire and what a goal! This is the halftime show with Omar Adouri on Pulse 95. Salam, welcome back to the halftime show with Omar Adouri. I'm your host, coming everything sport, international, local, the first UAE national team player to be in the building. I'm so gassed. I'm so happy that she's here today. Uh, Arij Al Hamadi is on the show. Now, for those that, that don't know, this is the time of the show where we do the fire round. The fire round is a time where we get to know our, our guests a little bit better. We throw one word one word at them and they give us their opinion. It could be up to a sentence. I'll be nice today, you know, because it's Arij and we go way back. So that's going to happen there. Um, Arij, I hope, I hope you are ready for this. Are you ready for this? Born ready. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Fighting talk. Right. Here we go. All right. Woo. Ronaldo or Messi? Messi, because I met him. Because <laughs> <laughs> you met him. Okay. Uh, favorite sports icon? Uh, can I choose two? Beckham I, I and could, I could Zlatan. Give you two. <laughs> Beckham and Zlatan. Yeah. Why? Um, they, sh- I don't know. They had their character and what they've um, contributed to football. Okay. And their personalities and yeah. Favorite cartoon? Ooh, tough one. <laughs> Uh, I'm putting her on the spot now. Yeah. That's really know she's I, I on the spot. I love cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> it's really difficult to, to pick. Uh, top of my head, I was just watching a trailer for this, uh, the regular show. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, why did a chicken cross the road? That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, a tough one. This is when I start throwing her under the uh, bus now, you know? Chasing a mouse. Chasing a mouse. Unbelievable, Jeff. Unbelievable, <laughs> Jeff. In short, um, favorite captain uh, or leader. As in, really, in the in a in a, in a game or yeah, it could like, be because I was thinking fantasy football. Uh, I mean, you could you could you could throw fantasy football in there as well. We're going to talk about that. I'm sure my wife and your husband are not going to let this one go. Um, Suarez was the best. <laughs> Suarez was a good captain. Yeah, he scored against Norwich five goals every game. Um, okay, uh, let's talk about. Favorite technology to use in sport? Uh, I love that. I love technology in sport. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've, I always invest in these uh, trackers that track your um, your distance. And the, I had Adidas had one that tracks your jump and your mm-hmm. speed and, and your explosiveness and all that. But they discontinued it. Right. So I want something like that. For me, that that's perfect. Okay. And if you could be. Uh, any athlete in the world right now, if you could swap with them for one day, who would it be? Ooh. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'd, I'd go for one of the American, uh, US... Uh, oh, why did you have to say that? My wife's going to be so happy that you said that. Oh <laughs> they're my God. doing great. They're, they're shaping football. They're, they're winning World Cups. Oh. And they, they're Did fighting you ha- for equality. All right, Eddie, let's move on to the next. <laughs> let's move on to the next one. Okay, um, Manchester United is your team, correct? Mm-hmm. What's the first name on the team sheet? Now. Yeah. Uh, Bruno for sure. Bruno Fernandez. Okay. If I was to tell you to finish in the top four or to finish eighth and win the Champions League. Win the Champions League. Win the Champions League. Okay, yeah. okay. We've won the league a few times. I mean, so there, <laughs> a there, lot there, of there times. you see the United in her <laughs> favorite sports other than football. Uh, basketball. Okay. I guess like, I played a lot of basketball in school. So. Favorite teammate. Ooh. <laughs> hey, I'll put you on the spot now. No one's on the on the chat, is it? I mean, we've got a few people in there. I'm not going to lie. But hey, listen, that's why I'm not showing you who's in there. <laughs> Can I pass? <laughs> no. Nope. Um, 
they they all pl- play an important role. Uh, but I always um, we always talk about this. I I love my triangle. Uh-huh. Uh, I know the north. I know the north. My, my side, yeah. Yeah, two two superstar players. We love them yeah. too as well. I oh. fight and we fight with each other, and yeah. we also pick each other up. So it, okay, we have a good. <laughs> Amazing. You're in the Premier League, and you like to be coached by one coach. Who would it be? Uh, either Klopp or Guardiola. I, I like their style. Give me one think. now. <laughs> that's that's what I'm talking about. Uh, I guess Klopp. Klopp. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's your biggest achievement so far? Being here. Ah, oh, <laughs> stop it! Oh my God! I'm gonna try and get her on the show just for that answer. Um, okay. If you didn't support Manchester United, who would you support? I can't pick someone from Premier League. <laughs> All right, I never said you had to. I'm just asking. Uh, uh, that's difficult. <laughs> uh, one of the Spanish top teams. I Give know. me a no, name now, Eddie. I, I can't. Oh it, my it's god! It's always been Man United. I can't. Eddie. Oh my god! A team that plays really well. Uh, I enjoy watching uh, them play. Um, I mean, I hate... No, I can't say this. I'll get a divorce. I'll get a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I'll have to pass. This would be one exclusive if she said Arsenal. God, she wanted to say Arsenal. I guess we'll never know because I won't put her on the spot. But I'm just saying, that looked like it was going to be an Arsenal. I'm just saying. All right. <laughs> um, last but not least, uh, your experience on the halftime show. I love it. I love what you're doing. I love the people you bring. I love um, the talks, the, the conversation, the questions you ask. Um, we need this. Uh, what you're doing for women's, women in sports and just sports in general in this region is really important. So really, thank you. And it's an honor to be here. Thank you. And you know what? I didn't get enough. I didn't get enough of Arij. I know uh, I know. we've got her husband who's giving me a face on the uh, Instagram live because he didn't want her to say Arsenal. Listen, Fadi, in her defense, she didn't actually say those words. I did. But I'm just <laughs> saying uh, we are reaching full time on the halftime show. Uh, honestly, I really enjoyed Arij coming on. And you know what? I'm going to try and get her back on on the show in the near future. Hopefully after she's had one or two... Um, new challenges and successes and as well i'm just saying now you might be looking at uh, a future fifa a future uae fa or even a coach as well because i know she's got it in her at each thank you so much the heart of sharja the heart the heart of sharja pulse 95